So this is the clock module we built in the last video. We hadn't finished it yet, but one problem we already had was that the clock went way too fast. You can see that even on the slowest setting, the clock is moving too fast for anything. That was because there was only a 10k potentiometer here. To fix this, I'm going to replace that with this potentiometer, which is 1 mega ohm. Now this is great because it gives us a way wider range of speeds, including a really nice slow speed. So you can see that as I replace it already, we can really slow this clock down. Now it's important to note that the 10k resistor we added in series with the potentiometer is really important because it adds a minimum resistance value. Where before the potentiometer went from effectively 0 ohms to 1 mega ohm, it now goes from 10k to 1 mega ohm plus 10k. Now we need that because if we have no resistance then this LED will basically always be on because the capacitor is just charging through nearly no resistance. So now that that is fixed, we can move on to finishing this module. So we wanted to be able to halt the system. Before we do that though, we need to make a circuit that takes in two clock signals, one from the automatic clock and one from the manual push button, and outputs one clock signal. Then, of course, we should be able to choose which clock signal we want to use. Now the way we do this is if you hadn't figured it out already, is with a 2 to 1 selector. We've gone over the circuit before, but we can do it again. So we have these three signals come in, and only one signal comes out. Now you can see that because of this NOT gate, only one of these AND gates will be true at a time. Also, whichever one is enabled, it will become transparent and mirror the second input. So if the clock is high and select is high, then output is high. If the clock is low and select is high, then the output is low. Same idea with the push button. Now we've gone over this before, so I don't want to waste too much time here. Now you might wonder, why don't we need an OR gate before the LED? Now you can put one there, but it's not necessary because the AND gate outputs don't have pull down resistors, so they will just be ungrounded states, aka current won't sink there, it'll just go through the LED and out to ground. Thankfully there is an IC that does all of this for us, it is the SN54S157. Now we can get the datasheet for this IC and figure out all the information we need, like the pinout, which we can see for this particular chip here. It's important to remember to tie pin 15 or G low so that the chip is enabled. Naturally, the next question is, okay, so we can select between automatic and manual clock. Where does the halt line come into play? Well, if you think about it, we just built it. So let's say we have the chip in the automatic state. That means select is high and the clock pin has a wave like this and the LED output has the same signal. Now, if we flip this switch and take the halt line low, then we stopped the clock. In other words, we halted it. Because as long as we don't press the manual press button, the clock is stopped. Now I know this might be a little bit hard to picture, so let's build this circuit so we can see what actually is going on. So when I'm finished with building this, this whole clock module renovation thing should be done and we can move on to the next part of our CPU. So as you can see, the clock is working and we can show the variable speed function here. Now it has a really large range of speeds. Then if we press this toggle button, we can see that the clock stops in its tracks, so the clock has been halted, and it'll stay off until I press the manual pulse button. So now that everything is working, we can move on with our CPU. So please like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Akil Mohadeen, and I will catch you guys later.